All right, not much here, but uh, my favorite knives that I've ever owned. Which happens to all be Spydercos. And my Spyderco Zoomer, which is my all-time favorite knife I've ever owned. I just wish that anybody seeing this could just feel this. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's made out of my favorite steel, which is 20 CV. What a fantastic design by a pretty much unknown knife designer because uh, Eric is such a good knife guy. He took this guy's design and looked at it and thought it was wonderful. And there you go, Tom Zoomer has his own knife. And what a fantastic knife. I don't think I've ever seen a knife that has G10 that has been contoured by hand. Like, it is, it's just something amazing. The way it feels, it just, all the swells in the right spot. It just, it feels so good. And probably the best sheath I've ever gotten with a knife. I mean, this is like, this reminds me of like, oh man. It's like a saddle, like a really nice saddle a horse saddle instead of giving you a loop for a fire steel they gave you just this big pouch on the side that you could put a fire steel in and a nice ceramic stone they didn't they didn't offer it but it's it fits uh i want to say it's called a db4 which is a uh it is a sharpening stone by falkneven that fits perfectly in this along with a couple uh, ferrocium rods, if you'd like. But on top of that, I give you the Jumbo Gold Spider Case. And it is super plush lined. So all of that came with this knife. It's freaking amazing. This one's new. This one literally just came out. Uh, it's the, what is it, the Mystic Manix. It's kind of hard to do this while you're looking at the camera. Uh, that is exclusive to the Knife Joker. It's the lightweight. Um, it's pretty much plastic, clear plastic, fiberglass, reinforced plastic, copolymer, as they call it. It's kind of got this green color to it that doesn't show up on camera. It is a green color. It looks blue under every other light. Also made out of my favorite steel, which is 20 chromium vanadium, which is just amazing. They say it's like M390, but in my opinion, 20 CV is superior to M390. And speaking of which, just kind of got a little bit of my finger off. I don't know if you've seen that. Just a little bit of skin. Oh, M390. That's the best steel on the planet. <clears throat> well, I have a great example here. Of some uh, M390. Right there. You see it? Is it going to focus? So I manually do it. Okay. By Jesper Voxnes. This is the... Viper Katla. I haven't been as excited for a knife for a long time as when this one came out in uh, 2020, early 2020. Uh, M390 Black Canvas Micarta. The Italians do Canvas Micarta amazingly. Real bronze from the country that it was invented in, which is really cool. And 
and uh, inset liners, liner lock, M390, right? Bowler M390, made by a company that is super reputable. But there is a thing with Italian M390, you know? A lot of people say that it is extremely soft. I think it has something to do with their heat treating, because this steel feels and sounds fantastic. It's kind of hard to uh, pick up the sound. It just it just has a sound to it. But look at the jimping on the back right here. You'll notice that there's some flat spots, all sorts of little spots on there. Now this is supposed to be hardened steel. It's kind of hard to portray what it looks like, but there is definitely flat spots on there. And, you know, this knife was, uh, I noticed it the first day that I had it, so I don't know if it came like that from the factory or if I just messed it up in the time that I had it. But that's supposed to be M390, man. It's got these little flat spots. This one's kind of bent over. You can get your finger on it. You can feel it. So maybe there is something to that soft Italian steel. This one's got uh, ceramic ball bearings in the pivot. It's got a very nice detent. And a titanium pocket clip. It, it's invisible when it's in your pocket. You don't even feel this thing. It's fantastic. But I'm kind of mad about the steel. It makes me not even want to work the edge on anything. And all knives that I carry I want to work with. So this knife really, you know, I was excited about this micarta. It feels as good as it looks. It's fantastic. But this knife made me interested more in G10. Because the lifespan of G10 is a little bit better on good G10. And uh, G10 is fiberglass layered in epoxy. And they call it all sorts of other things. But knife handles is generally known as G10. And it's usually black. But if you notice the layers, there is a fiberglass mat layer. And then there is epoxy fiberglass mat. What I really like about spider coat is that matte layer the fiberglass matte instead of being hidden they put it right on the outside and it gives it fantastic texture and that's glass so you know glass i mean it'll leave lots of marks from all sorts of things and it will wear down eventually but glass and ceramics are extremely hard you know that's why they make ceramic stones for sharpening is that it's harder than the steel so it will wear down you know there are lots of sand and grit and silicates get in your pockets from all sorts of things but it takes a very long time to wear down good g10 made with really good glass and this is real glass you know like silicate boron glass very nice and spider co does g10 better than any company i've ever felt so nice inset lines on this this one is the uh Spyderco Paramilitary 2 Emerson Wave, and this one is DLC coated, Diamond Light Carbon, which is my favorite coating for any steel. I wish they would offer it on anything for a couple of extra bucks. This one's got a uh, blacked out Spyderco logo, which is really cool. Stealthy. It's been used a lot. It's my favorite knife. I carry it every day. If you don't know about the Emerson Wave, a little hook right there is designed to when you pull it out of your pocket it catches on the hem of your pants and then flips as you pull it out and it's actually easier to do that than use the thumb studs right now because I need to lubricate it but I can't find uh, my spray can of lube. I like using uh, uh, CLP on my knives because it lasts a long time and it works really well and it protects the steel. So. Here's another one that I ended up buying. This is probably the most expensive knife I've spent money on, like, directly. They only made 2,000 of these as far as I know. I think it's more like 2112 or something like that for, you know, uh, retailers, distributors, and stuff like that. People that want the really low numbers. I'm not sure how you get in that club, but I've seen them with the numbers on there. It's pretty cool. Uh, made by Sal and Eric, which is cool. Father and son. Uh, this has got that fantastic G10 on it. 
this one has really been used so it doesn't have any stuff built up on it yet I've seen people complaining of there being a hot spot on the G10 on the insert right here, or right here on the edge. There's no insert on this, on the native chief. I didn't get that. Uh, I paid $2.95 for this. It's one of those things, if you know, you know. I don't know how people get them, because for the shaman... It was a CTS XHP, which I'll talk about in a second. And for the native chief, it dropped at a certain time. I forget the time, but I knew when it was going to drop. And I was literally hovering over the buy now on the website. It literally at the same second that it was available, I seen the, the bar pop up. And I click add to cart and then check out. And in that time frame, was moving really slow and then it, it was in my cart and then I tried to check out and it said it was no longer available they were sold out in less than a second so I result, resulted to going to eBay and there's a reason for that uh, CTS XHP which is often compared to poorly as harder D2 there's another comparison for it it's a terrible comparison uh, CTS XHP is one of the most expensive steels to produce in the world. Um, Crucible, uh, Crucible Carpenters has a very, very special recipe for this. As far as I know, it involves a ton of cobalt. And cobalt is great for steels. And, uh, that's as far as I know, is that they managed to get a bunch of cobalt into the steel, and the rest is a total mystery. Um, so that's why a lot of people compare it to D2, because uh, the strength tests and whatever, it seems like it's a harder D2, more comparable. Very stiff steel, not very forgiving. Probably will snap if you put a little too much exerted force onto it. But, uh, CTS XHP is a fantastic steel i can't wait till it becomes more popular it's made in the usa just like all of these besides the you know all the fold all the folding knives i have um and that's awesome because support united states companies you know support uh our labor here this knife you know it isn't perfect <laughs> it uh doesn't really fit your hand Unless you have gigantic Andre the Giant hands. You know, either way back here or right in the very middle. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that feel. I feel like this would be a really good field dressing knife. You know, this would be really good. A nice sharp edge, nice thin slicey profile would probably do really good for processing an animal. And uh, I kind of intend on doing that. I feel like it's kind of sacrilegious because this knife is so rare. But, uh, you know, can you imagine, this would be a really good fish knife. Yeah, good for cutting fish. I think I might use it for that. But if I do ever do that, best believe I'm going to put some floating device on my lanyard. Because that would be a damn shame. And uh, that beautiful diamond-like carbon coating. Which I think should be available on any firearm or knife out there. Great blade. Great blades. Spider code just knocks it out of the park. They went from being my least favorite knife company to my most. You know, if you look at their knives in the the nineties and stuff, you know, they were they were getting there. And they've been around since the late seventies, so you know, they they're really the guys that have been out there for a long time. And, uh, they're, they're, I forget what they call it, they're constantly improving feedback system. This one needs to be lubricated. I was just talking about that. I mean, they, they strive to make everything better and better. And there's not really much I could say they could do to make things better. Other than make more fixed blades. Because, uh, 
I mean, who doesn't want a giant chunk, giant chunk of 20 CV with uh, some uh, nice molded, custom, you know, made G10 handles. Just for comparison, I don't know if I ever did this, but uh, comparing the Zoomer to the Native Chief, I mean, that is, uh, Native Chief is giant. If you've ever handled the Native Chief, I mean, that is just a big piece. It's a giant piece. Um, I don't know what else I can compare it to. I guess the Manix too. Manix Lightweight. And uh, this would be a paramilitary too, but uh, I don't know if they are uh, the same size because I've never had a plane PM2. And that's fairly flat. So the Mannix is super wide if you've ever held it. I mean, that thing is two finger lengths wide and almost for me. This is a big piece. People always say it looks like a Mora knife. And uh, this is a lot bigger than a Mora. I heard a guy say it looks like a cheap steak knife. I mean, I kind of get that look until you, you know, see this gigantic zero edge. Which is like a full flat grind all the way to the edge, like an axe head. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty impressive feat to make an edge like that and uh just the, this handle man it's it's freaking awesome and i like more knife but uh you know, i was just looking for something fancier you know when i saw this uh the zoomer i thought man that looked just like everything i wanted in a knife but uh they wanted 600 bucks six hundred dollars this use this knife is still on spider co's website for six hundred dollars i wasn't gonna pay that for sure i seen a guy offering this one for 398 the rest of them you'll find online will be 420 on the dot i don't know why but you know maybe they're all stoners these knives just don't move <clears throat> people that know know and uh i can't wait to pick up another one just for a showpiece that i'll never use but this one's going to be my workhorse so I got this one for $216. Good luck getting that price. I offered this guy a bull crap offer. He had it for, you know, 398. I offered him 100 bucks. He countered for 250 and then we settled in the middle ish. <laughs> Just went back bounce back and forth and then we ended up that so you know this knife very expensive but it's more than this one you know this one has a six hundred dollar price tag from spider co this one i thought was uh i think they were selling these for 180 on the cutlery shop but now this one's what fucking 300 bucks on give or take and this one's 420 yeah, I, sell for that. I don't know if these are available anymore the mystic manix this was a uh, hundred and twenty three dollars on the knife joker talk about an amazing price for 20 cv which is better than m390 the heat treat that spyderker does is fantastic so if you look at uh, like Blade HQ, <clears throat> they have like 20 CV, M390, and I forget the other steel, all registered as the exact same, and I think that's all bull crap. 20 CV is a lot better steel. This stuff is some serious working steel made by uh, Crucible Industries. I really hope Blade Ops re-releases the emerson blackout pm2 but with a better steel like you know 
some 20 CD. That would be fantastic. All right. Well, hope you found my boring video uh, somewhat useful. Because if you're anything like me, you probably research the crap out of knives. And then uh, you find the same, you know, 10 videos out there and then that's it. And uh, it'll go through the same thing over and over again. They're in steel order of, of expensiveness. You got uh, S30V. It's relatively cheap now. Spyderco's doing a good job at getting good steel out for a cheap price. 20CV, which is my favorite steel. CTS XHP. And there's a bonus. Some, some Italian M390, which would be way down here in my opinion. All very good knives. <clears throat> All have their own little purpose. I consider this, you know, most people that carry this knife are just going to, you know, keep it in their collection as like a safe queen, you know, something they're never going to use. It's just going to sit in the safe and they're going to be too afraid to scratch it because they're so rare. But I'm going to work the crap out of mine, that's for sure. I already have a little bit. And definitely with the zoomer, this is something that almost nobody uses. Even the video you see, or the one video I've seen online of a guy using this is doing actual bushcraft stuff, which is what this is for. The dude's wearing like $400 gloves, you know? Like he's a rich guy. <laughs> and then uh, not too many videos on the Mystic Manix out there. Fantastic knife. I didn't think I would have liked the, the bi-directional texture the Spyderco does, but I think it's super good. And this thing is super light. I mean, you feel like this is almost paper compared to all the other knives. And with the steel that you're getting, too, I mean, it's fantastic. You know? And just Sal Glesser's design with the, the spidey hole. Everyone says that these look like pelicans or something like that or you know i did for a long time too but uh their functionality does grow on you i mean all their designs i mean the whole thing is just designed to be open one-handed you know and they did that and i guess that wasn't a popular thing or wasn't really well thought of back in the day and you see everyone has copied it now with you know thumb studs and things like that I think that's everything. Spiderco for the win. There's nothing like Spiderco knives. It's kind of a guilty addiction of mine now. But like I said, if you're looking for a bushcraft knife, you should look into the Zoomer. That's my favorite knife of all time. Get a nice knife. I mean, this sheath is ambi, so you can put your uh, knife in here on either side, so you don't have to orient it. If you're into bushcraft, you know, like me, it has a, uh, a like a swinging uh, sheath. So if you're sitting down, your your knife's always down by your side. You can tell I've used this quite a bit. I just, man, just thought that went into this. What a cool design. You know? You pick these up solidly for the high threes, you know, like 350. And then you get this super nice case. I mean, you can put all your spider codes in here. If you have a smaller collection like mine. You know? Keep these all laterally in here. And you could have like, you know, 10, 15 knives in this thing. And it's got the you know the, the gold series. Kind of like a shout out to uh Benchmade's you know gold series or whatever. So this knife just a little last bit. The CRKT Hisasu folder. I've actually carried a version of this knife, or this knife, you know, not this exact one, since uh, 2007. So, uh, 2008, probably 2008, you know, and I was always looking for a cool knife, but I was, I thought this knife was fantastic until, you know, I grew up and 
found there's a lot of cooler things on the market out there. And AUS 8 steel. I mean, I was always sharpening this. I've had, this is my fourth one. Comes, come to find out, uh, Williams, the designer of this, he actually has a bunch of custom knives that are super cool. Well, I hope you appreciated my, you know, unprofessional knife video. It's not all the knives I own. I have a Cold Steel Magnum Tanto too, and then uh, I have uh, some bayonets, but other than that, I don't really have too many. Slowly starting. But hopefully at least you get some uh, size comparison if you were uh, looking into any of these knives. <clears throat> not to say it, but uh, pretty sure these are 100% not available anymore from Cutlery Shop. They're all sold out. Not sure if the Mystic Manix Lightweight is sold out on Knife Joker, but I mean they're super cool. Get them if you can. The... Emerson Blackout PM2 is uh, not available on Blade Ops anymore, but I hope they re-release it. Cause, or do like a, an Emerson Manix or something really neat. That I would definitely buy it. And then the Zoomer. Uh, they made limited numbers of them, but there's a ton out there still. So get one if you're into a, a fixed blade knife that you last a lifetime, you know. You can chop wood with this thing. So much 20 CV. I don't know if I could do a comparison one-handed, but... Um, Manix 2 Lightweight. Oh, I mean the Zoomer's a lot of 20 CV. And these Emerson PM2s are super thick, too. I don't know if any of you guys know what the Kotla is. There you go. And then the Native Chief. And the Hisatsu. And that is just a chunk of 20 CV. Get giddy about it. That is just, you know, what a good steal. Spider Co always does a good heat treat. It's just, it's something else. I mean, even in a survival situation, you know, this is a bushcraft knife, but even if it was a survival knife, you could paracord or put wire through that and the hidden lanyard loop down here, which is designed for pommeling and, you know, hitting things. I mean, that can make a good spear knife. And you got about five inches. Right, I think it's somewhere like that. Five inches of blade on that. Anyways, if you're scrolling endlessly for Spyderco videos. Hopefully, this one doesn't bore you too much. It's something different, tabletop, but you know, a little different. My camera is just not. Focusing. Oh, there you go. Best knife I've ever owned. This is my EDC and will be for a long time. Manix. I think they designed this a lot better than a lot of the Benchmade uh, their access lock or whatever. I like the angle of the ball bearing lock. You know, that angle actually does, when you pull into it, the, the back end of the knife fits inside the palm of your hand really nice. Makes it a little, I don't know, it feels safer. I feel like I'm, I'm not pulling it so laterally, you know, and, you know, it's where you're sticking the end of your knife this way into your hand. You get, you get it at this angle that just naturally keeps your fingers away, you know. The <clears throat> Native Chief, kind of a novelty. It's a great lockback, but it's got so much handle. 
you know, you're holding the middle of the knife when you're choking on it. And I've seen Sal Glesser do this. He puts his finger up here, hits the button, and drops it down like that. And I think that's pretty neat. I've been doing that a lot with uh, my other knives now. Putting it right up there and then just dropping it to a safe spot. Viper Kotla. These ball bearing knives are kind of sketchy when you close them because they're, they're so smooth. I do, I know a lot of people hate this about the CRKT uh, auto locks, but I love it where you get this lock in the back and the lock, the liner lock. And then the assist, you know, it stops right there. So you close it, it gives you a little place to stop. All right. Well, that's all I got. Can't really think of anything else to say. Hopefully your endless scroll found some useful information.